Hello and welcome to Louise Singleton Creations. In today's video I will be making some beautiful poppy wall art which was nice and easy and I believe anybody could do it. I will be using all kinds of different things for today's project but the main things all come from Let's Resin including the new mixer which they have sent me which is fantastic so you will get to see that as well. If all that has piqued your interest, stay tuned and enjoy the video. To prepare my resin for today's project, I'm going to be using my new mixer and stand from Let's Resin. The mixer with the stand isn't actually available just yet, it will be in a couple of weeks. You can buy the mixer on its own, so I'm going to be showing you a little bit more of that. And in a couple of weeks when the whole thing is available, I will do a full review. But I wanted to try it out and so that's what I'm doing right now. So the resin I'm using today is epoxy resin from Let's Resin which is kind of a general purpose resin and actually my favourite of the resin range from Let's Resin. I've pre-warmed it a little bit first in a hot water bath and that really helps to keep it bubble free and you know lower the viscosity. So it's always a good idea unless you're in a really hot climate to warm it up a little bit first. Now for today's project I needed quite a lot of resin but I didn't have any of the larger clear cups. I wanted to use a clear cup so you could see the mixing uh, really clearly and you couldn't have done that if I'd used my bigger silicon cup. So I'm doing this twice <laughs> because I needed this, this amount twice to fill my mould. So it's a one-to-one -one resin by volume. So let's have a very quick look at the mixer before we begin. As I said, there will be a full review coming when the mixer and stand is available. But for now, I'll show you this mixer, which is available now. So here it is going. It's got three speed settings and it comes with two paddles. It's rechargeable, so you don't have to have it plugged into the mains whilst you're using it, which makes it very handy. It's got an upgraded larger screen now and it's much easier to see what your settings are and it's very easy to use too. And if you want to go for super easy, it's got an AI function and it's the button on the side which will automatically set it going for four minutes and there will be a buzzer that goes off when it's finished. So as you already know, I had two pots of resin to mix in the end and I tried using the AI function and I also tried kind of doing it manually just by setting the fastest speed and mixing it for as long as I felt like it needed. It actually only took one minute with the fastest speed setting and I preferred that to the AI setting but it kind of depends on how much resin you're mixing. So that was quite a lot of information to take in and what I was saying probably didn't correlate to the buttons I was pointing to on the screen but don't worry that's coming in the full review video where it will be a lot clearer what I'm talking about. <laughs> but anyway let's get this resin mixed. So I've attached the mixer to the stand and I've set it to the fastest setting and then after a while what I've I did that I found worked a lot better was I turned the knob on the side of the stand while it was still mixing to bring the paddle up higher so I brought it to the middle there and kept it mixing and then after a while I turned it again and brought it up to the top to make sure it was mixed all the way up and that's the way that I found works best for me because my resin was quite deep in the cup. Once I'd finished mixing, I removed my cup of resin and then put my silicon cup underneath to catch the drips from the paddle. You don't really need to do that because there's a removable silicon mat on the stand, but I thought I'd do it that way. And then all the excess resin drips off and then when you've finished 
doing what you're doing with your resin you can go back to it and give it a wipe with some kitchen towel and isopropyl alcohol and it just cleans it up nicely and did you see how clear that was a lot of people think that the um, paddle will have like a whisking action and incorporate bubbles but it really doesn't it was just really clear after i'd finished so i was very happy with the results Right, now that I've teased you with something that you can't buy just yet, well, you can, can't you? You can buy the mixer, just not the whole stand the part. Anyway, now that I've finished teasing you, <laughs> it's time to get on with today's project. Now, I've separated my resin into three cups, as you can see, and I'm going to colour each cup of resin with my mica powders from Let's Resin. And one of my colours will be white, so I'm going to be trying out the Ocean White pigment, also from Let's Resin, which I've never used before. So because I decided I wanted to make poppies on my picture, I wanted my background to look like sky and grass. So I'm going for the sky blue and the lawn green. And then the white will hopefully look a little bit like clouds in the sky, but we'll see what happens, eh? So the mixer is also very good for mixing in your pigments. So I brought it back again to do that. The white wasn't quite white enough for my liking and I added a bit more. I found that this white is a lot thicker than I expected. Perhaps I needed to shake the bottle up. I don't know, but it's very good. I'm looking forward to trying out for the ocean wave effects and maybe the bloom effects. But yeah, for today, it's just going to be clouds. So then I did the same thing for the lawn green and the sky blue and I was ready to pour. So the mould I'm using today is my large rectangle mould from Let's Resin. It comes in a set of three different sizes and it has wooden supports to keep it nice and straight on the sides. And I just put the resin very roughly in. Honestly, there wasn't much of a plan. I just knew I wanted the green at the bottom and the blue at the top and I hoped that the white in the middle might kind of merge between the two and give you a hazy effect and then I was hoping that what I'm doing here would give me the clouds but I think what I did was I mixed it a little bit too much because you know how you tend to faff well I tend to faff <laughs> and I looked at it like that and I thought mm, that might give me really obvious swirly patterns let's just blend it in a little bit and I think that was a mistake really I might have got more pronounced clouds if I hadn't done that but to be honest, I really wasn't too worried about how it would turn out. This is just the background. I'm kind of, if you like, you could call this the canvas that I'm using. Um, so instead of a canvas, I just did the resin rectangle, which I thought would look really nice. And so, yeah, I wasn't too bothered about how much the effects would work. So let's have a look anyway. So yeah, I got kind of a rectangular pattern in there and that's okay because I hadn't drawn out my design and so the design that I ended up doing, I made sure covered the bits where it got that kind of framing effect on the inside and so it turned out absolutely fine. So here's the design that I drew out after I'd seen what the background was like. I knew I needed to wait to see the background before I did my design. And so there I've got some carbon copy paper which I put underneath and then just traced my design onto my resin background. I have to say though, if I was doing it again, I would probably find an alternative to that carbon copy paper. There was a little bit at the end that I needed to clean off and honestly you, it's surprising how much ink comes from the carbon copy paper and it takes a while to get it all off. So I might not do that again. It, it worked, it did what I needed it to do, it was just not a perfect solution. So then it was time to do my outline with my hot melt glue and underneath you can see I've got a turntable that used to be in a microwave that my mum was getting rid of and she asked me if I thought it might be useful and I thought yes I think that will be useful. <laughs> so I've got my microwave turn turntable underneath. So this idea wasn't mine. I don't know whose idea it originally was 
but I'll tell you where I got it from. I saw a video recently by a lady and her channel is called AB Creative and she did the most amazing hydrangea picture in this way. She did hers on a canvas, I think, and the background was an acrylic pour. But the idea of using the hot melt glue gun, I got that from her. And yeah, I'll leave a link in my video description because her picture was amazing and it's definitely worth a watch. So thank you, AB Creative, for the inspiration. So the way I planned on doing this was to do my outlines in the hot melt glue and then add the some gold pigment powder onto the glue because it clings to the glue really well. It, you know, not while it's wet, it, you need to wait for it to go hard. But even after it's gone hard or cured or however you want to call it, the pigment powder actually sticks to it really well however I did do it a little bit at a time I didn't do the full picture and then put the powder on just in case it lost its you know um I don't know what you would call it but I suppose tackiness <laughs> it's clingability what would you call it? I don't know but I just thought to be on the safe side it's best to do a little bit at a time add the gold powder and then do a bit more. But I might not have had to do that. I could have done the whole thing possibly and the powder will have still stuck. Who knows? But yeah, that's what I did. <laughs> So I wanted a very metallic pigment powder and this was the most metallic gold I had and it's from Resin Pro. And as you can see there with a thick brush, it goes on nicely, very easily. And then you can just brush off the excess when you've finished. And I'm not going to show you me doing all the glue on the whole picture because this video would be hours long. It did take me... <laughs> quite a long time to do it all but it was so much fun so stepping forward in time here it is with most of the outline finished there were a few bits where I realized I'd missed it and I added some more but it's easy to do that afterwards no problem at all so the next job was to paint it so I'm using acrylic paints for this I've got cadmium red cadmium yellow and studio red because really poppies are more of an orangey colour aren't they I love the colour of poppies but yeah people think some people just think oh they're red but more, I, in my mind they're more of an orange what do you think so yeah the cadmium red is more of an orangey colour and I thought that would work well and then the studio red just for the darker more shadowed areas and so anyway, the first job was to colour all of my poppies in the cadmium yellow because I thought that would be a really good base colour. I did do two layers in the end because the green and the blue were still showing through quite a lot after one layer. So let's fast forward again to the next step. So with the yellow base layer done, it was time to add the cadmium red and it's a very simple process. I was just painting it in the right direction basically. As long as you're going in the direction that the flower petal would grow in and it looks natural, you can't go wrong really. I'm no, um, you know, I'm, I'm not an experienced painter and th this was quite simple. Honestly, I think anybody could do this. So at this stage, I think they're starting to look like poppies. The colour is just about right. But now I decided to add some of the studio red just to add some more of a redness to it with the orange undertone showing through and, you know, just a few shadows in the places where it would be darker and it just gave it a little bit more dimension. And yeah, I thought they looked a lot better with that extra bit of red on there. So next I used some dark brown just to add some shadowing to the centre of the poppies although I did decide to do my um, special iron filing and magnet trick which you'll see in a minute. <laughs> I did that a long long time ago in an old video with the when I was making poppies and the iron filings and the magnet works so well and you'll see that soon. 
and yeah I, I don't know why I had my cup of tea in the frame but never mind luckily I didn't wash my brush in it which is my usual trick but yeah try to ignore the cup of tea <laughs> So the final step with the painting was just to add some green to the buds and then it was done. And yeah, that just finished it off nicely, adding the green. Okay, now for the special effects for the centre of my poppies. And I'm afraid you will have to bear with me a bit. There was a bit of trial and error in this and also um, my camera did go out of focus a few times. But... I'm sure you'll be able to get the idea. Ignore that little gold thing you can see on the screen. That was my first attempt, which didn't work. <laughs> so pretend that's not there. All I want to show you is the mixing of the iron powder. So it's iron powder and a little bit of UV resin. So what I've got here is a piece of acetate on top of a large, well, kind of large, uh, but yeah, it's a strong magnet and it, the magnet's just under the acetate and I'm just pouring on the iron filing and UV resin mixture and you can see the magic is already happening. Don't worry if the spikes get really big. You can manipulate this until you're happy with the way that it's looking. Yeah, just keep moving it around. If you don't like the spikes, squash it down and it'll go smaller. It's really quite magical and... I'm sorry if you can't really see clearly what's happening, but yeah, just keep adding it until you're happy with it. And what you'll end up with is kind of a ring of like spiky blackness. Uh, it doesn't tend to stick so much in the middle. It just wants to go to the outside of the magnet. And yeah, uh, let's have a look. So here I'm just moving the magnet around underneath just to give you an idea of how it all works. It's not something that needs to be done. Uh, if, if you weren't watching, I would have cured it straight away under the UV lamp. <laughs> I just wanted to show you the magic of it really. It's quite magical. So there we go. It's all just moving around. And then when you put the magnet back into place, it moves back into your pattern that you wanted. So yeah, once that was done, I put it under my UV lamp for two minutes to cure the UV resin. And then we were ready for the next step. So once it was cured, it was solid. And then I could just peel it off the acetate base. And there we have it, a nice ring that will look lovely in the middle of the poppy. However, I did need to cut mine well I trimmed the edges to tidy it up first but then I cut it into sections so that it would fit within my glue outlines that I'd done on my poppies if I'd known I was doing this I would have probably not done the glue in the middle of the poppies and just done rings and stuck them on but because that didn't work I had to cut it into little sections and then just glue them on so here you can see that I'm just trying out the little bits that I've cut in the different places where I want them to see if they'll fit before I add any glue. The glue I added was E6000 glue and that worked really well. But I think already you will be able to see what a difference it makes having that textured centre to the poppy. I think it works so well. And here's a slightly blurry close-up, but it gives you an idea of how it's looking. So I decided I wanted to have some gold centres to all of my poppies. So I just used some more of the hot melt glue in the middle of each poppy and added the powder on the top just in the same way as before. And then after brushing off all of the excess powder, it was finished and I was very, very happy with it. And here is a bit more of a close-up. Doesn't it look good? Even if I say so myself. <laughs> it's kind of the opposite way around to the one that inspired me. The one that inspired me had glossy flowers and a matte background. But with this, we've got the matte flowers and the glossy background. And I do love the, the not acrylic, <laughs> the resin as a canvas background. Especially because it looks nice from the sides as well. So it was quite a long video today. I managed to show you quite a lot, including that wonderful resin mixer. I hope I've inspired you.
If I have, please do give this video a thumbs up. That helps me so much. Subscribe if you would like to and I will see you again next time. Thank you for watching and bye for now.